Hey, welcome back to AM950 and DougPagetRadio.com. I'm Tony Jones, the guest host in for Doug Paget, and alongside me is the sidekick John Music. And we have on the line Yale theologian and multi-book prodigious author and former professor of mine, Miroslav Wolf. Miroslav, <laughs> thanks again for being on the show. It's great to be with you, Tony and John. John's got a question for you. Hey, Dr. Wolf. Um, so, isn't it the bread and butter of evangelical Christianity that Jesus is the only way to God? And so, um, doesn't your what you're promoting in your book kind of like you know what's the need to have Jesus as the center of our faith if we're all worshiping the same God? Yeah, no, in no, in no ways, you know, in no way. Um, and again, the the. the Similarities there with uh, with Judaism. Does the claim that uh, Jews and Christians worship the same God invalidate the claim that Jesus Christ is the Savior uh, in the minds of most Christians throughout the ages that I know? It does not. By the way, it does in Jewish eyes, but not in <laughs> Christian eyes. Um, and uh, you know, we have to respect and honor this uh, this position of uh, of our Jewish brothers and sisters. Uh, so I, I do not think, for instance, that, you know, I'm a, uh, if, you, if you want to put it this way, I'm a kind of full-blown Trinitarian Christian. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died uh, for salvation of the world. Uh, so uh, in the, the, there is no attempt to merge faiths. Um, you can have different faiths and the same God. <clears throat> well, I mean, that's going to be blowing the minds of a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I can, it's obvious why your book has uh, stirred controversy and, you know, it's also answered questions for a lot of people. I, I, I want to turn um, for our, our remaining moments with you to something that I think a lot of Christians think about at this time of year during Lent as we approach Good Friday and Easter and Holy Week and the Passion of Jesus and that is uh, what Christian theologians call the atonement. I've been writing quite a bit about this on my blog. I'm going to release a little ebook about this um, this coming week. And uh, you know, your thinking on this, uh, Miroslav, was very um, important to me in my kind of formation as a theologian. What's interesting to me is that um, I've sat with many, many evangelicals who have basically said they basically equated what I call the penal substitutionary theory of the atonement or interpretation of the atonement with the gospel. Like the gospel is that Jesus died in order to subdue the wrath of God that God holds against human beings for our sin, which we had no choice in. We're not, you know, we, we inherited it from Adam and has been passed on down the line. But it is so, the, the penal substitutionary theory of the atonement is so dominant in Western Christianity, especially in American Christianity today. And I'm just wondering, as a theologian and a, a robustly Trinitarian Christian, how do you approach the atonement? Uh, you know, I, I think uh, we have, uh, within the evangelical community, but also, uh, also broader, within the evangelical community, if you look at worldwide, uh, and if you look throughout the history of the Christian faith, uh, we have had many different accounts of atonement. And I think those accounts of atonement, different ways in which we understand how the work of Christ works, so to speak, and those different accounts uh, are often not incompatible. They can, uh, they can go together. And I think that often these big fights that sometimes we have about uh, uh, atonement uh, are somewhat unnecessary. I don't believe that, and I don't think it's, Christian, uh, it's scriptural at all, that Jesus Christ died to avert God's wrath, so that you have a, a wrathful God whom, who somehow has to be appeased uh, by, uh, by Jesus Christ. Uh, that would give, uh, that would bring, actually this is heretical view in my judgment, because that would, that would put uh, God and Jesus Christ at odds uh, with, with one another. Uh, I think uh, God, uh, though wrathful towards sin, loves the sinner. And out of love, and not to avert his wrath, it's because he, notwithstanding his wrath, wanted to save all, right? That God, out of love, uh, comes and deals with the question of sin. So in any case, I don't think that 
the idea of dealing with God's wrath is the fundamental issue. Now, uh, our, uh, you, you earned your Ph.D. under Jürgen Moltmann. He's uh, somebody I admire a great deal, too. He talks a lot in one of his books about God in, in Christ. God actually experienced what it feels like to be God forsaken uh, to the point, even on the cross, crying out kind of in, that he is, it feels that God's not there. He, it's, it's almost an, you know, almost an atheistic cry, if you might. And, and um, I think, w- what do you make of that, that God's uh, ultimate solidarity with humanity or humankind on the cross is one of the most powerful acts, aspects of the crucifixion? No, I think that's a very important uh, uh, dimension that has often been uh, uh, neglected. You know, I just came, uh, I preached a sermon on Job this morning. Um, and you have in this cry of uh, Jesus on the cross almost the enactment of the kind of experiences that Job had. You know, God who he felt was almost against him, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. A God who somehow uh, wasn't to be seen, uh, who wasn't there in the suffering. In Jesus Christ, you also, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, Christ, when he dies on the, uh, on the cross, you have this sense, of, this sense of abandonment, and yet precisely in this abandonment, God is in solidarity with, uh, with the world. God feels and experiences the same abandonment uh, that human beings uh, experience, and God does that in the person of Jesus Christ as a human being. So, um, I think that's a very important uh, aspect of, of atonement. The other atonement is uh, um, a, a kind of death on behalf of the sinner. This is the suffering alongside with those who suffer in solidarity with them. With them. But there's the other side, which is death on behalf of the sinners. And uh, both are essential to Christian faith, I think. Well, that's uh, really helpful. And I I. I find a lot more hope and life in that those kind of understandings of the atonement than in really I think what's what I was brought up with and what's dominant. So, uh, in in thirty seconds uh, or so, tell us what you're writing now, what you're working on now, what we can look forward uh, to hearing from you in the, in the next year or two. Uh, one book I'm working on is on faith and globalization, and I found that together with ex Prime Minister Tony Blair. Uh, that's going to pick up some of the, the uh, ideas that we developed in the course that we talked for the three years at Yale. And I think we're uh, losing uh, Miroslav Wolf from his phone, but he uh, was, what he was saying is he, he's been teaching a course with former Prime Minister Tony Blair at Yale for the last couple of years, and he's got a book uh, that he's working on that that will be another fascinating topic. Miroslav Wolf has been our guest in the last couple segments of the show. His book... Allah, A Christian Response is a fantastic book that I uh, heartily recommend. Uh, And uh, also, for those of you who want to explore more, what he's been talking to us about, the kind of the work of Jesus and the reconciling work of Jesus, pick up uh, his award-winning book, Exclusion and Embrace. Our thanks to Miroslav Wolf for being on the show. We're going to throw it to a break right now, and when we come back, John and I are going to talk about the atonement. You're listening to AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota, Doug Paget Radio, also on DougPagetRadio.com. Religious radio that's not quite right. It'll never get better than me, but if 